Hello everyone, welcome to today's episode of Let's Talk Footy, a language everyone speaks. I'm your host Shaheen, and as usual, I'm sitting next to my friend Ayo. How are you? I'm very good, my friend. How are you? Man? I'm good, I'm good. I'm very excited. Um, A lot of things happened over the weekend, uh, lots of good games, and I'm super excited to talk about some of the stuff that we have wrote down here. Um, The first one though, as you know, I'm a Real Madrid fan, and I really want to talk about the... 2-1 narrow victory against mm. Alaves. Mm. Um, I think that was a... You know when they talk about championship winning games, like mm. those games at the end of the season, they matter. Mm. I think this was one of those games. I think Real Madrid um, did did well to get away with a narrow win. Um, you know, Sergio Ramos scored from a header. Uh, it was a great cross from Cruz. Great finish from Ramos. However, he did kind of mess it up a little bit. Um... Just giving away a penalty in the box very recklessly, just going elbow high into the face of the defender or the Alavis uh, striker actually, sorry, and all, at the same time also shoving him down in the box. I just think it was really reckless and very unnecessary, especially as a as a as a captain of the team yeah, and as yes. a leader. Um, obviously, that's the type of football he likes to play. That's mm-hmm. Sergio Ramos mm-hmm. in a nutshell. Yeah, yes. But I think he needs to learn from those little mistakes because you know they could have tied that game or they could have dropped points more points and i think he he needs to do better in those scenarios but thank god um very shortly after carvajal came and was the right person at the right time and got the second goal that got them the win but yeah it was it was a nail biting game it was one of those old school it was raining it was tough it was very physical the fans were into it so it was a very exciting game to watch um, yeah. I, I didn't see the game, but I mean, this is Sergio Ramos for, for us. It like, really uh, is, man. I'm not sure how old he is, but... I think at this, I think it's 33 or 4. He's definitely 34, I think. Do, do you think it's too late for him to change? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's He's, too late, right? You, if you have Ramos in the back, like, he has a lot of pros. Mm-hmm. But, you know, as, as every single player, I think he has his own cons and... That's something you have to... It comes with the package, you know? You can't... You can't yes. avoid it, unfortunately. At, at this point, yes. Yeah. It's yeah. So the question is, what's the what's the solution going forward for, for Real Madrid? Do you stick with Sergio Ramos? Or? Oh, yeah. I don't think they can get rid of... I mean... <laughs> there was another interesting thing that, that happened was... Militao and Ariola both started the game. Mm. And I don't think this is a coincidence. Because oh, I remember... In the Champions League game against PSG, uh-huh. PSG's first mm-hmm. goal, uh, it was a mess up. I think we talked about it in yes. the mm-hmm. last episode. Um, there was a very miscommunication, misunderstanding between um, Courtois and Varane. Now, I don't know if Zidane is giving them a break and rotating players, which he is known for. He likes to rotate players. I think he's a big yeah. believer in that just because players go through a lot of games during the season and he really, the team is really looking to win the league after... Yeah after many years and I don't know if he's rotating them or is he saying hey you mess up you're gonna pay for it and also at the same time it's a message to the rest of the players hey I'm gonna get you're gonna get your chances it, it's up to you not to take them yeah. so I, I truly don't think it was a coincidence I think he dropped them because of that because yeah. it was it was a horrible misunderstanding like that shouldn't happen at that level yeah. and I guess they paid for it but I don't think they can do the same thing with Ramos just because of his character because of his leadership that yeah. brings into the team I think there's a lot of good things that Ramos brings to the table and you can just and it had his experience you know he has yes. yeah it's reckless but also in a game like that maybe it's needed you know what I mean like there was a lot of scenarios where his physicality and his toughness yeah. Yeah. actually worked so I don't think I think Ramos the will be there until he retires. It, uh, and the season is long anyways. Like, I don't watch much of Real Madrid, as you know. But yeah, I you need to start more. changing that. Yeah, I need to, right? <laughs> <laughs> For this yeah, to work, you need yeah. to start. <laughs> well, I know that I've seen, I've seen a lot of games in Champions League where from nowhere Ramos gets that goal, you know? So. Oh, yeah. The, like, the Sergio is, Ramos yeah. time or whatever yeah. they call it. I guess this is who he is. Yeah. yeah. But unfortunately, um, there was... There was also some bad news, but Barca for me, Barcelona oh, right, also right, got a right, narrow right. win. Yes, yes. Obviously, you were just showing me um, oh, Simeone's yeah, reaction yeah, to yeah. Messi's 87th yes. 
Yes. I mean, before we get to Messi's goal, I, I, I still don't understand how Ter Stegen is not the first choice keeper for the Germany national team. Like, he is arguably the best goalkeeper in the world. Like, he... I mean, All Black might have something to say about that on the other side of the pitch, but mm -hmm. he made them. He made some fant fabulous saves, and he kept them in the game, and he gave the likes of Messi or other players to to be able to, you know, grab that late mm -hmm. win at the end. But uh, but Atletico Madrid created a lot of chances. I think they're gonna they're gonna regret not taking them. But they were facing, I think, the yeah, best goalkeeper Pogba. in the world. Pogba. He Pogba. and and he. I don't Pogba. know how Manuel Neuer is still. Yeah. Still the maybe because he's the captain, but that's that's a question. But yeah, Messi, man, I don't know. It's 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 tough as a when as a Real Madrid fan, it really is because yeah. it's just he is probably the best player in the world. It's gonna be very interesting to see what Barcelona does once Messi. I don't think he's gonna leave the club, leave Barcelona. But mm -hmm. once Messi is done and retires, obviously it's gonna be sad. For the world of football, but I think Barcelona is gonna go through some depression. It, yeah, it will. It will be interesting because there's been games where uh, Barcelona has been really bad. Uh, yeah. I I remember the game against Inter Milan, the Champions League. Inter Milan scored first. I think after maybe ten fifteen minutes. Yeah. There was Barcelona. They were flat, yeah. completely flat, yeah. and it's like. In the second half, Messi and Suarez woke up, yeah. and they were like, "You know what, guys? Yeah, come on, let's do this." And and when Messi wakes up, he's he's arguably the greatest. No, I, that I have seen. Yeah, I would yeah, say. And, and as coaches, we understand this because we saw the reaction from Diego Simeone. Oh you know, it's God. like a player scores a goal, and you cannot be mad at your team. No, it's you, like you know, it's Messi, man. Yeah, you know, you just have to applaud, and it's it's Messi. You can only keep him quiet for so long. Yeah, you can no, only yeah, like it's just you know just that 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 second, you know. Yeah. And and I remember I watched the first half, and I saw the save from from Testegan, and I, I remember instinctively saying to myself, "Why is there a debate about who should be the first choice for Germany?" But again, I'm not really sure how Manuel Neuer is doing. In, in Germany, you know, I, but, but he's that not save, doing as good. As yeah, that, that good. save was like wow, like you know, like yeah. you you see this from the game, his I, prime, and, and it's not just his, it's not just his saves, it's his his feet. Like yeah, Manuel was yeah. always yeah. you know one of the oh, best yeah. players with his feet, oh, yeah. but Tish Stegen is to me way better. Like Suarez, just I think it was Suarez the other couple days ago came on and said. He's like another midfielder, isn't it? Yeah. Like that's how good he is with his feet. Yeah. It's his positioning, it's his handling, it's his um, presence in the box. Like they can he's use a, him as another player. Yes. He's just so complete, he's and his a, reflexes as a keeper, yes. he is truly spectacular. And all black, of course, too. Yeah, I think he's is, a giant. Yeah, like they yeah. call him the wall. Like he is. Yes. He's. I think those two are, to me, the top two goalkeepers in the world. They really are. I don't know if I should agree or disagree. With You're gonna bring on the hair. It's not even about. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not really about. It's it's more like I could see because you watch more Spanish. You see these guys. Yeah. Uh, and I know in the English league, I've seen Alison do some things that I'm like you know. It's for like, sure. For sure. Like, wow, I don't. I don't disagree. Yeah. But yeah. then he also messed up on the weekend too. Got yes. coming God. Well, I know? I didn't see that. I, I did. I think he should he shouldn't have came out that early. I think yeah. it was reckless. And then. With his hand, like you know, but it happens yeah, as it a happens, goalkeeper, yeah. you know, this it could happen to any keeper. The, but yeah. I think those are the scenarios where you can see who's who's amazing, amazing. and who is just yeah. a little bit better and the best, you know what I mean? Fair enough. But yeah. once again, De Gea, like De Gea has made some fabulous saves yeah. over the years. I, I think, but he's also had some really I, I, at this point, I don't consider him the. But One that's the best. But then also you can you can argue that it's the players in front of them too, right? Yeah. The defenders that play in front of De Gea are different yeah. to the players that play in yeah. front of Ter Stegen or Old Black yeah. or Allison. You yes. know what I mean? Yeah. So I think I don't think it's just the keeper on their own. I think it's, it's also it, the it's, the yeah. back line, the, the presence from yeah, yeah. Big time. And yeah. unfortunately, Maguire is not the answer. Mm. Uh, I, <laughs> you can't there's there's a lot of players that you need to that's that's a whole different episode yes, in itself yes, I yes. think may, more maybe more than one episode yeah, yeah. but before we get ahead of ourselves let's 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 focus on Messi and obviously I think everybody knows he just won the sixth 
Yeah, um, so are you. See, uh, I don't know how Ronaldo feels about that. I think he's probably devastated. Yeah. But did he deserve it? To be honest, dude. That's a long pause. Yeah, it's it, it's it depends on how we look at it. I think Jogan Klopp summed it up properly. Is he yeah. are we giving the title to the greatest player of all time right now? Then yes, he deserves it. But are we thinking about the best player over the course of last year? I I think that Van Dijk, Saidomani especially. I think these two players had better. Well, seasons. Mane didn't even make it to to top three, right? Uh, Did he? I'm not sure. I think he was there. I was think. he? I think so. We we should have checked that. <laughs> I, I'm I'm not I'm not really sure. But for me, he's the best player in the world right now. Mm, I I don't doubt that. Then in terms of presence, Van Dijk. I was looking at the. I think Liverpool's not the last, not the Brighton game, the game before where Van Dijk goes down injured, mm -hmm. and you could feel the the, the the it was just tense. Everyone was quiet. Yeah. You know, it's like wow. Like, if, oh, if, if he's done, if this is yeah, serious, yeah. Well, as soon as he gets up, it's like it's yeah. a goal. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Uh, like no offense to Messi, I just feel at this point does he 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 affects games? Yes, but you lose. 4-0 yeah. in the Champions League yeah. semi-finals. Yeah. You know, it's, these, these are the, the moments that define players. So for this alone, I, I don't think that yeah. he should win. Yeah, but, I, but yeah, it's what it is. Until we have a clear metric of... It just, it just, sorry to cut you off. Yeah. It just seems to me like there's something against giving ball and doors to, to defenders. Or to, like there, was a, there was a period where there was a lot of rumors about Casillas should win the ball and doors yeah. when Real Madrid... You know, was doing well. or even Sergio Ramos. He won the Champions League. He won yeah. the Champions League three years in a row. You know, he was doing great with Spain. This, that, and there was thoughts like uh, Casillas won the World Cup, two Euros, yeah. all that. So, but they didn't win. It was again. It was always again about Ronaldo and Messi. Ronaldo and Messi until last year when Modric won, which was also a question to a lot of people. Yeah. Did he deserve Definitely. it? To me, he did, just because he did win the Champions League with Real yeah. Madrid, and also. He br he brought a team. He was the captain of Croatia. He brought a team that n nobody really expected to be in the final of the to World Cup. Fair, yes. And and I think there there was a lot of moments that questionable moments. I think Cro Croatia the calls were not for Croatia in that game, in my opinion. And I think they could have actually won the final. And I think a big part of that was due to Modric and obviously there was other players like yeah. Rakitic and all that I don't want to get too much into it but I think Modric did deserve in my opinion but Messi is it's a big question yeah. but it's going to be interesting to see how Ronaldo reacts to this because he's going to be desperate to win mm -hmm. the Champions League and mm -hmm. probably Serie A even though they're second right now to enter yeah, yeah. Uh, with Juventus and also the Euro 2020 is coming up oh, yeah. and you know if he if he does well with Portugal and yeah. You know, if, if they go far or if they win it again, you yeah. never know. You never he know. has a chance to tie it up again. But yeah, yes. spe speaking of Portugal, yeah, can you yeah. talk to me about a group of death? Because a lot of people are like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. Yeah. How, how does that even happen? France, Germany, Portugal. That just seems a bit unfair to me. I'm, I'm, not, sure. I'm not sure how they went about it this time because I wasn't really following. I remember... I was at the game and after my game I checked my phone mm. to see the groups and I, I see the group and I'm like wow and my first instinct is a big name is going out yeah you know? and, 100% and who's this big name who's gonna go for me I, I think Germany it's Germany or France <laughs> yes <laughs> I think Germany or France I, I, I believe so much in in Portugal the coach not even Ronaldo just the, the way the coach goes about running the team mm -hmm. I don't think France has changed much since the World Cup, so... But did they need to change much? <laughs> pretty solid, man. Yeah, it's, it's pretty... But they, they struggled in the group stages pretty much with yeah. Turkey, and, you yeah. know, it's... Uh, data is, is huge in football now. Teams know your weaknesses. With Portugal, you never know what is happening. You just know that Ronaldo is going to play. Yeah. And they have they have a lot of players. Germany... Oh, their front three yeah, is deadly, it's man. Deadly. Like, yeah, it's... It's, you like Bernardo Silva and Ronaldo? Yeah. That's, that's a good yes, attacking yes. country. And I think two games before, they played this striker. I'd never seen him before. And I was like, oh, wow, this this boy could be something for the yeah. future. But, but again, I think all games are played in Germany's home. So that might be an advantage for Germany. I'm not sure. But the other tricky thing, too, is top two will qualify. But the best... 
the best four of third place will go. So there's an opportunity. Oh, for, interesting. Yeah, okay. there, there's an opportunity for one of these guys. Okay, to, so all to go three forward. might actually go through. Yeah, eventually, it's, it's, it's very possible. Yeah, I heard about. I heard something about um, because it's the 16th anniversary of yeah. Euros. I think there's 12 countries hosting it there's a lot so it's yeah. basically across the continent yeah. so the tra traveling time is going to be yeah. interesting yeah but yeah so that's why it's 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 weird really and these three have it just to me it does not seem right you know what i mean yeah, there's other yeah. groups where the competition is yeah. not as yeah. stiff as to, this to, group. sorry to cut it to make it even more difficult whoever if england finished first in their group they play the second place, so you know it's nah, again one big team is going. Yes, up. yes. I have no offense to England. I don't see England competing against these guys, but uh, I I disagree with that. that. I yeah. disagree with that. I think England is is gonna be one of the surprises, man. I think England is they need a keeper. Yeah. <laughs> if they solve the keeper it's issue, I don't think Pickford is England quality. I like oh. Nick Pope. I like Nick Pope a lot. The guy from Bond. I, I, I don't I, think any. I like him a lot. To be to be the champions of yeah. Euros or Europe or champions of the world, I think you need a bigger goalkeeper than that. Goal. I need, but they, I don't think they have anything at the moment. So two so, two countries I would I would place my bet on right now if I could would be Italy and Netherlands. I think they are going to do some oh, big wow. big things. Oh yeah. wow! This is a, yeah big big things I, I expect from these guys. I hope so, man. Yeah, there's a lot of countries like Italy and Netherlands have been pretty quiet for the yeah. past couple of years. So it's gonna it's gonna be interesting to yes. see how they come back and you know showcase themselves. Just but they've done well in the group stages. So yeah, that's, yeah. that's really just key. just to go quickly. Uh, my reason for Netherlands is because I believe football is about communication, right? If you look at all Netherlands games in the last year or a year and a half, they've pretty much used the same eleven. Mm -hmm. So that means that when it comes to understanding on the pitch, mm -hmm. they've been developing that. But so that also means, you know, you can't just rely yeah, on it. If a player gets injured, then, then you yeah. You can't just rely the, on the that's the That is the big problem. Yeah. But, but yeah, let's see. Let's, let's see. see how it goes. Yeah. yeah, it'll be interesting. I'm excited. Lots oh, of yeah. football in the oh, summer. Yeah, man. I'm so excited. Yeah. Man. yeah, it's like, yeah. Uh -huh. You want to talk about Man United? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Drop points again? Yeah, not a big surprise, to be honest. Yeah, uh, no, I agree. Because uh, <laughs> Aston Villa, very organized team. Mm -hmm. You have to give them credit. They've brought in a lot of players and they are really organized. I think th the surprise is, away from home, we're pretty bad. But when we cannot win games at home, then That's there is a problem. problem. Yeah. Because, I mean, Liverpool did not beat us at home. Yeah. You know what? And the, the things that really surprise me is, you see, a manager comes into a club, we bring in Juan Bissaka, I don't know why, we have Diego Dalot, mm -hmm. who I think is a superb right back. Yeah, he uh, was, they were saying he's the next Neville. Okay, for yeah. me, he's top, top, top. Yeah. I, I see a player that always creates a chance when he plays for United. Yeah. Then we have Maguire, he's not a top, no, from my understanding of a defender, he's not a top. The last, I've seen maybe three, four goals that but he's probably sorry to go, but yeah. he's probably the best center back they've got. No, like who's better than Maguire? Chris Smalling. Chris Smalling is. I don't know about He's that, the man. first choice in Roma right now. I will give you my reason for Maguire. In the last, I've seen three or four goals. He won the league with Leicester City. Maguire. No, he wasn't. He wasn't, he wasn't there. No, he no? wasn't there. No, I don't think oh. he was there. The, but the thing about Maguire here is, I've seen we could go check goals that we've considered right, and you will see that. Maguire is always man marking a player in the box and that creates the space. He's a top defender. You don't see Van Dijk man marking inside the box. It's your job as a top defender to say, you know what guys, this is my space, this is your space, let us move together. Yeah. But he I've seen games where I think it's happened to Aston Villa. He's man marking and the team is moving. He leaves the space open and the player goes in. So, but you think that's that's a Maguire problem, or you think that's the coaching of Man United? Because I don't, because I think the the responsibilities at that level are very clear. It's either the coaches are saying, "Hey, Maguire, you're mm. working with your partner center back, and you're staying together, and you're defending the spaces, and whoever maybe the holding mid or whatever is man marking the players that are in the area, or you are a big lad and you're." 
man marking the bigger lad on the other team and you don't leave them alone and everybody else is responsible for the space. I don't think that's Maguire's decision. Mm. I think that's something the coaching staff... I, I mean, I don't know. I'm just looking at it from a coach's yeah. perspective. If, if I have a defender man marking players all the time, I would obviously bring it up. Uh, if it's happened consistently, yeah. maybe it's the coaches that are asking him to do that. Maybe it's the team. <laughs> to be fair, my understanding is it's a bit of both. Because maybe this is just a habit for Maguire right now. And at Leicester, I don't think he was the... I'm not sure. I don't think he was the top defender. I think Wes Morgan was there at the time. Mm -hmm. But also, it's also a coaching problem because if this is happening... And I, I, I think if we look at most of the goals United have considered, we will see that this is happening. Then it's up to the coaches to, to identify this and say, you know what. But again, no offense, I don't think Soxer is that manager. No. Like I remember after a game, he said he needed to sort out the players' heads. And Van Persie actually questioned that, like, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. You know, it's. I don't know, man. I don't know. This is a manager that I think went on relegation with Cardiff. Let's not forget that, you know. It's, I just, you know, a manager comes in and you see his ideas. Yeah. I don't see any ideas. Yeah. I just see a team that wants to counter-attack, yeah. but don't even understand the positions to take yeah. to start the counter-attack. Yeah. You know? this, this, it's, it's sad. It's this, sad. Th this is just, th 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 I feel like this has been the discussion about Man United for so long now. It's sad. You know, sad. there's there's no one, there's, there's no tactics, there's no yeah. plan, it's, there's it's no sad. who's the right manager, yeah. what's... Who are the players? There's no... I don't think Man United has had a starting 11 in the past four four yeah. seasons. Like, I can't pick a first 11 and say, yeah, this, this is, is Man if, apart from De Gea. That's it. That's it. That's it. Even there's Pogba, even yes. Rash. I don't think, like, have they been consistent enough yeah. to be, yes, this, this player is definitely in the starting 11 of Man United. So I think the problems, as we've mentioned yeah. previously like the problems are just there's way there's a lot of deep. there's a lot of issues that man united if, if and i don't think it's gonna change next season or this season i think no. it's a long-term project yeah. but i don't think things that are being handled up top i don't think people that are handling the things up at the top are, are the right people and this has always been a discussion yeah. uh, amongst you know the ex-players of man united yeah. and all that stuff i don't think the players that are at man united are world-class players for Man United to even compete for top six, let yeah. alone top four, yeah. because tops like top six of Premier League is is yeah. big and competitive, and I don't think Man United is just at that level. If if Sochi remains, I see Man United finishing maybe ninth, tenth, eleventh. And and they went and fired Jose Mourinho oh, yeah. when when he came. Uh, I, I don't understand. Speaking of Jose Mourinho, he's coming back to yeah. Old Trafford yeah. on tomorrow on yeah. Wednesday. Yes. Um. So. Yeah. That's 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 gonna be interesting because I'm sure Mourinho, even though he he might say oh it's you know it's not about Man United or me or me proving myself I think he's gonna definitely want to go there and yeah. you know quite yeah. some critics. I don't see and any other result other than a, a win for Spurs. I completely agree, especially yeah. Spurs just look like a different team right oh now. God, Players yeah. look inspired. Players oh, look yeah. excited. Dele Alli is on fire. Yeah. Son, Son is amazing. Kane is yeah. doing amazing, and it's it's just Mourinho going back to Old Trafford. It's just that icing on the cake, that extra yes. little yes. bit of motivation yes. and kick for. I think that's. But once again, that's another three, possibly two points dropped for Man United oh, if yeah. they don't get a result. And after that, we play Man City. But but just to drop one thing, I noticed about Josie recently is, you know, he said. Uh, we scored, uh, we've considered, I think, four goals in, in two mm -hmm. games at mm -hmm. home. But I prefer to sc say we've scored yeah. in seven goals. That's so that's a subtle hint. I'm not so defensive after all, you know. So, could so let's, see. Let's, could see. let's see. Could let's see. 100%. But I think that's also just to be positive and optimistic yeah. and not, not try to bring unnecessary negativity towards the squad and yeah. towards his players. Yeah. So I think that's a very smart response yes. by him. Yes. I saw an interesting post on social media, though. The, in the last two games against West Ham mm. and against who did they just beat? Uh, Bournemouth. Yeah, against Bournemouth and West Ham, the the two goals at the end that they've conceded, off 
the 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 first goal and the second goal were all at this in the same times, exact oh, really? same times, really? which is it's obviously a coincidence, but it was really interesting to see how in the last twenty minutes yeah, of the games. But I think in the last game it was just a free kick that went oh, yeah. in, Harry brilliant Wilson, free kick, brilliant. and then mm. obviously the game is going to change a little bit. After. That's a Liverpool player from next season, eh? Yeah, yeah, he's on loan from Liverpool. Oh, oh yeah, oh wow, yeah. Oh. yeah, it's it's yeah, it's this is a team. Even this better from Man U. <laughs> yes, this is a team. Yes, that's a Liverpool player for next season. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's interesting times in the Premier League now. I, I would oh, say. it definitely is. Even with Leicester, oh, yeah. second place right oh, now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're <laughs> you never know. They yeah. might come back ahead yeah, again. Yeah, uh, title contenders for sure. I, oh, let me not say for sure because there's something there's. There's something about Liverpool this this year. There's a belief around yeah. around the the st- I I saw this uh, I saw the training ground where there's a photo of the Premier League title, you know. So that suggests that mentally it's in the heads of the players. Oh yeah, this is 100%. the target, you know. And, yeah, yeah. And you see that you see it's just it's something is happening. They, they they concede goals and they end up scoring scoring goals, you know. But we have to give credit to Leicester because what we all need to realize now is. They don't play midweek games, and yeah. this is a manager that really believes in improving the the communication between the players. So they would only keep getting better. That's a they serious have, advantage. They, yeah, yeah, they have lots of time to rest. So now Liverpool could they could smell that you know what this can be our year. So the question, even Jurgen Klopp said this: Are they going to buy in January? Do they think you know what Robertson is having a lot of ankle injuries? Do we now get a left back? But who's good enough to come into the Liverpool squad and improve the team immediately. I know Junior Fepo was... he. Would, they always yeah, talked about him, but he's been yeah, Barcelona yeah, now. Yeah. I haven't really seen him play. Yeah. Uh, and then there's the problem with Salah too. Are we bringing in someone that can... You know, because you look at Origi, no offence. He's a legend, by the way, Liverpool legend. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's what clubs is. Yeah. But... You don't do you, think... Yeah. yeah. I don't think they can rely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the problem with Liverpool has always been the same. You know, they 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 hardly rotate, right? They hardly rotate, especially when it comes to Premier League games and Champions League games. Are they going to be able to stay healthy mm-hmm. and keep the players healthy so that they can compete all the way oh, towards yeah, the yeah. end of the season and the last few games that really yeah, matter? Yeah. Or is it going to cost them again because they don't have that yeah. depth that City has? City, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, City might be a bit far ahead. Yeah. Far uh, behind from them, but you never know, man. Two, three games, things can change it's very changing. quickly, and we've it's seen it. Change, it's yeah. happened all the time yeah. in the past, and that's that's what makes the beautiful game exciting. Yeah, yes. You know? yes, it's anything can happen right now. Less to have three fixtures that they would say to themselves, you know what, we can we can actually win this. I think they play Watford, Aston Villa, and someone else. I'm not sure, but. They would say, you know what, guys. For sure, for sure. We we can do this. And and they return leg like, against Liverpool eventually. That, you know, they beat yeah. Liverpool. Yeah. All of a sudden, there's everything changes. Everything yeah. is changed. Everything changes. And then with Man City, it's uh, it's a question of, are they troubled by injuries or, are teams finally beginning to understand? Figure them out. What to do? Because an interesting stat I saw was, in most of the games they have dropped points. They had the most crosses in the game. Yeah. And what did Norwich do, because I really watched that game, was they kept the spaces tight in the yeah. middle, so you, they could not find Kevin De Bruyne, David Silva between the lines. Yeah. They were forced to take it wide, and they don't necessarily have the tall forwards to put the ball in the air. Yeah. It's about whipping the ball in, yeah. but if the defence is deep, there's no space behind, yeah. you know? Yeah, if you're playing against a solid back line that's organised and yeah. communicating and, you know, keeping focused and concentrated, it might not always work. It might not, yeah. Because I, I, I noticed that too, that what they do is they push the full backs on, the wingers tuck in a bit. They try to create those two e ones, three e twos on the yeah. wings, and they put on those early crosses yeah. or rip Kevin, it in or whatever. Kevin, right, if they yeah. put it in the air, you you can't really expect Sterling yeah. or Aguero, Aguero yeah. or you know shorter players to get to the end of those. Yeah. But if you're whipping whipping it in, and if you're going against top defenders, it might not work yeah, might, every time, yeah, and yeah. that's the case at the moment. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And we, I think we have to give credit to Steve Bruce. I think. I myself included. I, at the beginning of the season, Rafael Benitez gone, Steve Bruce in. You just believe that they will struggle, yeah. and they are struggling. But they've picked up some really good results. Yeah. I think they picked up points against Spurs. They've picked up points against Man City now. So yeah. So let's see. Let's see how they 
how they keep going. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. It's it's very exciting as yes. always. Yes. So that's it for today, I guess. Yes. yes. Thank yes. you very much, everybody. Thank you, Ayo. No problem, my man. For another yeah. episode, and until next time. Until next time, everyone. Thank you for watching the second episode of Let's Talk Footy, a language everyone speaks. Please support us by liking, subscribing, commenting, and getting engaged with us so that we are able to provide more and more episodes and we have more fun together. Yeah? Yes, please, please, please. Do it, do it, do it.